In this lesson, we'll talk about one of the most commonly tested aspects of not only the quantitative reasoning section, but also the data insights section when it comes to arithmetic, and that is percentages. So let's first just define what a percent is. And it literally comes from the French per son, which means out of 100. Per meaning out of, son meaning 100. And a percent is always defined by another value. So the phrase 20% is ultimately meaningless without a comparison factor. But 20% of 30 is 6, because that's what out of 30 is 20 out of 100 commensurately. So let's talk about how we can estimate percentages. The first step is to take 10% or 1% of a number by shifting the decimal left one or two places. So 10% of 30 will become 3, because you can see technically the decimal point in 30 is after the 0 in the units digit, and you just shift that left, keeping the zeros after, and you get 3. Then you can multiply or divide your 10% or 1% result to reach your exactly sought percentage. So, for instance, if we wanted to go from 10% of 30 to 20% of 30, we do 10% of uh, times 2 is going to be 20%, and 3 times 2 would be 6, so therefore we know that 20% of 30 is 6. <clears throat> and... Percents ultimately enable easy mental manipulation. We talked earlier about how mental math is defined off of our biology of two hands, five fingers, ten toes, and percentages fit within that paradigm. So you can easily determine what 20% more than X is by knowing that would technically be X plus 0.2X, or it's simply 1.2X. And 20% less than x is x minus 0.2x technically, so that would be 0.8x. So you can add or subtract percentages by just taking the value and multiplying it by 1 plus that x percent as a decimal. So for instance, 25% more than 40 will be 40 times 1.25, which becomes 50. And you can do that math a whole bunch of different ways. You can do 4 times 12.5 if you just remove one zero from 40 and shift the decimal in 1.25 over. You can also make 1.25 into 5 fourths. And you know that 40 times 5 fourths, you do 40 divided by 4 would give you 10 times 5 would give you 50. There's a lot of manual manipulation things you can do with integers, decimals, fractions, and percentages. So practicing this kind of mental manipulation and doing it multiple ways can really help aid in your flexibility and approach on exam day. You can also subtract X percent from a value by taking that value and multiplying it by one minus X percent as a decimal. So commensurately, 25% less than 40 is going to be 40 times 0 0.75, which is 30. And again, you can see that by multiplying 40 by 0.75 directly, you could also do 40 times 3 quarters because 0.75 would be three quarters as a fraction, and that 40 divided by four would, so it would be 10, 10 times three would give me 30. <clears throat> now, this slide here might be the most important slide for the entirety of our quantitative reasoning section, and this is our English to math translation guide. And there are some shortcuts that if you're 100% confident in them, you can use those shortcuts for manipulating percentages, but if you follow this guide, you are guaranteed to get to the actual translation, and it can save you from making mistakes. Of course, the word what is our unknown, so we represent that mathematically with a variable, usually x. The word is, or any form of the English verb to be, so was, will be, is equals, the equal sign. Percent, or the percent symbol, is going to be to divide by 100 or shift the decimal left two places, as we've been discussing thus far. The word of means to multiply, and this is one of the most commonly mistaken pieces of the English to math translation, and you can think about it in this way. If I have four of x, that means four times x. Out of means divide, so if I have five out of seven, I take five and divide by seven. If you see the phrase what percent or the expression x with the percent symbol, you must write out x divided by 100. You cannot just shift the decimal left two places in the value, 
because you don't know where the decimal lies in the variable x or whatever letter it may be. And if we take a look at this expression, trying to figure out what percent of 10% of 35 is 70, you may be thinking, okay, I can work this through some manual tricks if I had a calculator. But remember, on the quantitative reasoning section, you do not have a calculator. So you're more likely going to want to go very deliberately and translate word by word. So the what percent becomes x over 100. The of becomes a multiply. The 10% becomes 0.1. Of becomes multiply. 35 is just 35. Is an, is an equal sign. And 70, of course, is just 70. And you can just translate directly across. And now it's just a matter of combining terms. So the x and over the 100, we could just make that x times 0 0.001 instead because you just divide 0 0.1 by 100, insert the two zeros after the decimal but before the 1, times 35 is equal to 70. Now we know we generally prefer to manipulate integers rather than fractions or decimals, so we multiply the whole equation by 1,000 to get rid of that decimal on the left-hand side. We get 35x is equal to 70,000. We then can divide by 35. And we discover that x is equal to 2,000. So 70 is 2,000% of 3.5, which was 10% of 35. And the way that the exam generates difficulty is by giving you more steps to complete, more details to work through, rather than introducing differential calculus. So the last topic with percentages is what is known as percent change. So percent change is a formula of the difference between two values divided by the original times 100. So you have to just track which is the original and which direction you're going to properly manage this uh, operation on the test. So if you have a percent increase, your original must be the lesser of the two values because otherwise you wouldn't be able to go up. So if we were asked 40 is what percent greater than 10, we find the difference between the two values, 40 minus 10 becomes 30, and the original is the lesser of the two values, or 10. So 30 divided by 10, or, uh, which is 3, times 100 gives us our 300%, which is 40 is 300% greater than 10. Percent decreases, though, the original is going to be the greater of the two values, because again, you can't go down if you didn't start from the higher point. So 10% is, or sorry, 10 is what percent less than 40? Well, that's going to be 40 minus 10, same 30, divided by 40 as the new original when we're doing a percent decrease in this problem, divided by 40 times 100. So 30 divided by 40 reduces down to three fourths, and we know that becomes 75%. So Let's go on over to the whiteboard and work through a couple of examples to see how percentages can be tested in the quantitative reasoning section of the GMAT Focus Edition and how you'll need to execute with this type of problem. So here we have a sample problem solving question. We set up our scratch work A, B, C, D, E as always, set up our little line of what we're being asked for, and we're being asked for what percent of x is 240. And hopefully, you're already recognizing some of the terms from our English to Math Translation Guide. And we're going to write in our answer choices here because they are simple numbers. But it's generally pretty difficult with a relatively apparent set of English to Math translations to back solve or alternatively model the problem. They're designed in such a fashion that you're probably going to want to do the technical math when they're not really hiding the words, right? This is a relatively short little expression in English, and we should be able to translate it. So we'll start from the beginning, taking notes as we go. So 60% becomes 0.6 because 60 shift the decimal over two places, 0.6 of, so times 200 is means equals 40%, so 0.4, of means multiply, and x is x. So we've got to solve for x first, and the best way to begin that process is to get rid of the decimal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 to get to where we've now got 6 times 200 is equal 
to 4x. 6 times 200, of course, is going to be 1,200. And that's going to be equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4 to discover that 300 is equal to x. So now we've got to go translate the second half. So what percent, I'm not going to use an X here because I already have an X, but we'll say A over 100 for the what percent of means multiplied of X, and we know X is equal to 300 here, is equals 240. So now I can just cancel the 300 with the 100 to get down to 3A is equal to 240. And we divide both sides by 3 to discover that A is equal to 80. And 80, or sorry, 240 is 80% of 300. So when you're working with any clear algebra or English to algebra, English to math translation, just go very deliberately. And you can see there's a little decent number of steps in this problem. but None of them are all that difficult, especially arithmetically, and you just have to be careful, make sure that you're going deliberately through it, through it, and you don't really have to think about what the different pieces were. You just know that when you solve for A because of the way you structured it, that's our answer. And you can, you know, double check it and go, yeah, 240 is 80% of 300, but there's no real need to. So let's scroll on down and take a look at one more example here. So. Setting up our scratch work, we've got A, B, C, D, E here. Put a little line over top. And we're looking, if we skip to the end, at how many bass did Orpic fish, hat fish hatchery have to start the four-year period. So we want the bass to start. And we'll just call that B. So we've got real numbers, so we'll write those out. 40, 52, 60, 64, and 72. And we note that there are numbers in the choices in increasing order. Plus, we've got the phrase, how many, framing our question. So that means that there might be a back-solving opportunity. I'm not saying we have to back solve, but saying that it might be viable. So we'll start taking notes at the beginning. So or pitch or pick fish hatchery, it's hard to say, has 260 more bass this year than it did when the hatchery opened four years ago. Okay, so we know that this year is so this year is equal to bass plus 260. <clears throat> and you don't want to write it out algebraically unless you're 100% certain of what this year is. You can just kind of take it as a note. And we know in the next sentence, the hatchery increased its number of bass by 50% every year for the past four years. Okay, so we know that year one up 50%. Year two, it goes up 50%. Year three, it goes up 50%. And year four, it goes up 50%. Oops, not B, 50%. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, now, looking at this structure, you might be thinking to yourself, there looks like there might be an algebraic way to do this, because I know that Year one is going to be 1.5b, but year two is going to be 1.5 of 1.5b. Because I just keep on going all the way through all of this. And you might start thinking to yourself, well, I don't really want to do 1.5 times 1.5. I end up with like some really kind of crazy decimals. But instead, we could just set up some basic columns and walk through the percentages by back solving. So if we had 60 bass to start, our end year one, we'll just say EY1 as a shorthand, would be 90 bass. 
and my EY2 would be 135 backs because that would be 45, which is half of 90, add that. And then we've got to get my EY3, which at this point I can tell is not going to be an integer because I can't take a half of 135. But I still want to kind of work my way towards this to see whether I'm where I need to be because my EY4 target should equal B plus 260. And in this case, 135, half of that is going to be, if we did 134, that'd be 67. So it's like 200-ish. I'm just going to be kind of broad with it. And EY4, if we're doing B plus 260, should be equal to 320. And I go, that's going to be like actually 300-ish. So that's too low. <clears throat> and that allows me to eliminate A and B as also being too low. So then, choice D, from 64, the end of year one would then be 96, because we'd add 32 to 64. The end of year two would be an additional 48, and you can always add 50 to 96 to get to 146, and then subtract two to get to 144. Then the end of year three is going to go up another, that's going to be another... It'll be 144 or 72. So that's going to take us up to 146, 216. And my target here should be equal to 260 plus 64, which is 324. And if we add half of 216, well, that's going to be 108. And sure enough, if we add that up, we get 216 plus 100 is 316 plus another 8 is exactly the 324 that we saw. So we can confidently pick D. At this point, recognizing that with word problems, it may be harder to do some of our English to math translations, or we might just look at our structure and go, I don't really want to be multiplying all these decimals together. Don't forget our alternative tactics, even when we're engaging with somewhat technical arithmetic or algebraic expressions in either the quantitative reasoning section or sometimes the data insights section of the GMAT focus. So go ahead and practice some of these problems on your own to improve at this very important aspect of your GMAT focus journey to improve your performance on the exam.